You may remember how Solyndra, the solar panel maker, got a half billion dollar government backed loan and then went bankrupt. Turns out that risky investment strategy did not stop there. A CBS News investigation has found a pattern of the government pouring your tax dollars into clean energy. Investigative correspondent Cheryl Atkinson is here with a story that you'll only see on CBS this morning. Good morning, Charlie. Taxpayers backed, as you said, more than a half billion dollars in Solyndra loans. We identified 11 green energy companies besides Solyndra that together got billions of tax dollars, then declared bankruptcy or are suffering other serious financial issues. Most surprising, perhaps, is how bad off the government knew some of those investments were before committing all that money. Take Beacon Power, a green energy storage company. We were surprised to learn exactly what the Energy Department knew before committing 43 million of your tax dollars. Documents obtained by CBS News show Standard & Poor's had confidentially given the project a dismal outlook of triple C+. Plus. Would you put your personal money into an investment that's triple C+. Plus? Not on purpose. Economist Peter Morisi sums up just how bad that is. Is it a junk bond? It is a junk bond, but it's not even a good junk bond. It's well below investment grade. The Energy Department was investing tax dollars in something that's not even a good junk bond. Exactly. This level of bond has about a 70% chance of failing in the long term. In fact, Beacon did go bankrupt two months ago, and it's unclear whether taxpayers will get all their money back. And the feds made other loans when public documents indicate they should have known they could be throwing good money after bad. It's been four months since the FBI raided bankrupt Solyndra. It received a half billion tax dollars and became a political lightning rod, Republicans claiming it was a politically motivated investment. We counted 12 clean energy companies that are having trouble after collectively being approved for more than $6.5 billion in federal assistance. Five have filed for bankruptcy. The junk bond rated Beacon, Evergreen Solar, SpectraWatt, AES's subsidiary Eastern Energy, and Solyndra. Others are also struggling with potential problems. Nevada Geothermal, a home state project personally endorsed by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, warns of multiple potential defaults in new SEC filings reviewed by CBS News. It was already having trouble paying the bills when it received $98.5 million in Energy Department loan guarantees. Sun Power landed a $1.2 billion loan guarantee last fall after a French oil company took it over. On its last financial statement, Sun Power owed more than it was worth. First Solar was the biggest S&P 500 loser in 2011, and its CEO was cut loose, even as taxpayers were forced to back a whopping $3 billion in company loans. Nobody from the Energy Department would agree to an interview. Last November, at a hearing on Solyndra, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu strongly defended the government's attempts to bolster America's clean energy prospects. In the coming decades, the clean energy sector is expected to grow by hundreds of billions of dollars. We're in a fierce global race to capture this market. Economist Morisi says even somebody as smart as Secretary Chu, an award-winning scientist, shouldn't be playing venture capitalist with tax dollars. Tasking a Nobel Prize mathematician to make investments for the U.S. government is like asking the manager of the New York Yankees to be the general in charge of America's troops in Afghanistan. It's that absurd. A couple of questions. Does the government believe that this kind of economic support to these companies is a success story? Yes, I think they do. The Energy Department, which wouldn't agree to an interview, would tell you that this program is high risk by design. All of these programs are. They understand that they're putting tax dollars at risk, but they've, they've built into the program $2.4 billion in potential losses. That's already factored in. And they understand there's a, what they say, valid philosophical debate over whether this is the government's role. But they point out that both Democrats and Republicans in Congress and Democrat and Republican presidents have supported the idea. And how do the companies explain the failure? The companies are saying that the ones who, that have failed, there's really nothing much to say about that. But the ones that are still in business say they are very different than Solyndra. There's, there are not many similarities that their projects uh, have more support, that the projects are sound, even though they've hit some bumps across the way. And in some cases, they actually have... Um, guaranteed markets for their clean energy products. Mm -hmm. I should mention that AES, one of the companies, said that it has canceled the loan and the House Energy Department, the House Oversight Committee is investigating all of this.